And welcome back to this week. I'm pleased to be joined by the Commissioner of the Department of Economic and Community Development, Bill Haggerty. Nice to see you, sir. Welcome. Bob, nice to be with you. Thanks very much for having me. I always me see ECD as one of those touchstones. If you guys succeed, you lower unemployment, you increase the payroll around mm -hmm. the state, you increase jobs, jobs come to Tennessee. If you don't, it goes the other way. Unemployment goes up, people maybe leave the state, statewide income goes down. What are your keys to make sure that you are successful in attracting those new jobs, lowering unemployment in Tennessee? Well, I, luckily, Bob, the governor has the same perspective you do, and he's put a lot of attention to this area. He's put a great focus on economic development since he's been in office. And so our department is blessed to have a lot of good attention from the governor, and he's probably our strongest asset. But what we've really done is played to our strengths, and Tennessee has a lot of strengths. So we've pushed those elements hard. If you think about it, we're a right-to-work state. We're extremely well situated. Our cost of living is quite low relative to other places one might live in the United States. So we've been able to attract a, a great deal of new people into the state who want to live here and be part of what's happening. And I've been fortunate to have a great team, and we've attracted a lot of good companies to come and you take You talked about the governor. He kind of changed the perspective, changed the direction of ECD when he took office and when he campaigned for governor, in that while he does, does want them, he's not necessarily targeting big corporate headquarters to come here, billion-dollar companies to come here. He's targeting more growing existing companies, jobs growing there. How successful has that been? Well, you know, we've actually had a, a, a great deal of discussion. And what you just said is uh, correct in terms of our focus on companies that are incumbent to Tennessee. We've, we've had a huge focus on that. And what the governor did was allowed us to decentralize our office. So we took our department and broke it into nine different regions and put the staff in the field where incumbent companies are located. So we've really increased the amount of coverage that we've got with existing companies here in Tennessee. But we never once have let up in terms of our focus on large companies, mm -hmm. companies outside the state. So if you look at our capital expenditures over time, going back 2006, 2007, 2008, up till today, there's been a steady increase in capital expenditure in this state. The capital expenditure continues to grow here. So we continue to get big companies, as well as more and more focus on the small companies that are incumbent here. But one of the things I always emphasize to my staff is I don't want to go and talk to a company, to a CEO here in Tennessee, and find out that they've located a business across the border. If a company ought to be located in the southeast, they should be located here in Tennessee. And if they're expanding anywhere, we want them here in our state. So the governor has been wonderful about bringing businesses in to visit with him, going out in the field with us to visit with companies and letting them know we appreciate their presence here and we want to do everything they can to help them grow. Just last week we saw General Motors infusing millions more dollars into the Spring Hill plant. There's talk that maybe Volkswagen may add another car. How much credit does the state get for that? Do you get, are you in those discussions? Do you, do you get some of the credit for that infusion we are, of money? We are deeply involved in these discussions. If you go back to when we reopened the lines there at Spring Hill, I was back and forth between Nashville and Detroit extensively. And we've been extremely involved in making all of this happen. At the same time, the state should get the credit, not anybody in particular. And I don't think the governor cares about who gets the credit as long as the jobs come. We're very happy with the progress that we've made. We continue to see new progress with the GM operations here. We're thrilled with that. We think there's great promise for Volkswagen. Nissan has had tremendous success here. And if you look at the Nissan story, it's been just mm -hmm. fabulous. So with all of the automotive activity, Tennessee now has ranked the fourth year in a row, number one in the United States for automotive manufacturing. Unemployment so is up in Tennessee a little bit over a year ago. Is that a signal that maybe things aren't going as well as you would like as far as just creating new jobs, as far as you know, hopefully lowering unemployment in Tennessee? Bob, this is a problem I'd love to have. That, that equation, the, the numerator and denominator, are both moving. We continue to increase the numerator. That means we continue to add more jobs. We have more jobs today than we did last year. We're adding more jobs at a steady pace. More people happen to be moving to Tennessee to take advantage of that, mm -hmm. though. So what we've seen is the denominator of that equation grow as well. So we have more workers today than we've ever had in Tennessee's history. That's something that I can market to companies, and we're marketing that aggressively. So I'd like to see those numbers move down over time, but I'm glad that more workers are coming to this state because it's a great asset. Our, I think our workforce is a great asset that we want to market heavily. And that's what we're pushing hard on. Right Talk now. a little bit about incentives. Is it part of your job? The genie's out of the bottle. Incentives are out there. Some people don't like them. They call it corporate welfare. Others say this is the way you get in the ball game. You got to be competitive. if you want to get big companies here, are taxpayers protected? If you offer an incentive to a big company to come here, do they have to produce so many jobs or so in order to get that money? Well, the incentive discussion ought to start right here. You mentioned competition and competition is where it all begins. It's like unilateral disarmament. If we were not to offer incentives, we'd be no in a very difficult here. situation because all of the other states around us do. 
uh, it would certainly be my personal preference to do away with all incentives and tax credits and lower the corporate tax rate by an equal amount. I think that would make our business environment broadly more competitive. But on a regional basis, we have to be very cognizant of what Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas are doing. They all have incentive programs in place, and so we have to be able to stand up to those and make sure that we remain competitive in that game. Within that, though, we have been very diligent in terms of making sure that the taxpayers of Tennessee are protected. On the front end, we're looking for strong return on investment. So we're looking at jobs, the wages associated with those jobs, and the extent of capital investment that's coming into the state. On the back end, what we're looking for is performance-based incentives that are driven either by the number of employees that, mm -hmm. are, that are hired here, the amount of capital investment that takes place, and over a long period of time, we have what we call accountability agreements that we put in place with the companies. There are other times that we actually fund infrastructure to a public sure. arena. And in that case, we do our diligence and try to make sure that the jobs that are coming along are likely to come and we make our best bet. It's an investment decision there, but we're generally making an investment that broadly benefits the community. Mr. Bill Haggard, appreciate your time very much. Thank oh, you, sir. Thanks very much, Bob. Stay with us as we continues in a moment. <laughs>